This video will be a very brief introduction to iterated integrals and Fubini's theorem, just going through a very simple example to explain some of the ideas. So let me first talk about iterated integrals. And I'll use an example. So by iterated integral, I mean something like this. The idea is that you're performing two integrals in a row, essentially. Perhaps a better way to write it is with these brackets, because I'm performing an integral with respect to x. And when you do this, this is a process that's sort of similar to taking partial derivatives in that we have to think of y as a constant when we take this integral with respect to x. So you'll go through this process. You'll have an integral with respect to x. And in the end, you'll have something that involves y. So this thing here, in the end, will be a function of y, which you will then integrate from 0 to 3. So you're doing an inner integral with respect to x, going through a bunch of things to give you something that just involves y and then integrating with respect to y. So let me go through it. This inner thing, we think of this as 2x squared times y, which y we think of as a constant. So an antiderivative of this would be 2x cubed over 3 times y. And we're evaluating this from 0 to 2. So this is all the inner expression. And we're integrating this, in turn, from 0 to 3 with respect to y. So I plug 2 into x and 0 into x. Sometimes it's useful to even write down which variable we mean when we do this. So I'm plugging in x equals 0 and x equals 2. So looking here, I'll have 2 times 2 to the 3rd over 3. So 2 times 8 over 3 times y minus what you get when you plug in 0, what well, you get 0. Now, well, this is 16 over 3 times y. That's all we're integrating. And, well, by now you should know how to do something like this. If you go through it, you should get 24. So what we just evaluated was was this expression. First we do an integral with respect to x, and then an integral with respect to y. But well, we could ask what happens if you do things sort of in the opposite order. So this is a different iterated integral. First I'm doing an integral with respect to y y is going from 0 to 3, and x is going from 0 to 2, and we think of this this way. And it turns out that if we were to go through the whole process of evaluating this, you know, we'd go through evaluating this integral to get something in terms of x, and then we'd integrate with respect to x to get a number, we would also get 24. And this is because, well, there's a theorem in the background that I'm about to introduce, which says if your function is nice enough, uh, these inter iterated integrals where you reverse the integral signs will be equal, and they'll be equal to the double integral over the region we're talking about. So this is Fubini's theorem, which says if f is continuous on a rectangle. And actually, this is true for far more functions than just continuous ones. They can, they can be pretty bad. Um, so if f is continuous, oh, I should mention f is a function of two variables, x and y. And if it's continuous on this rectangle, then it'll necessarily be the case that
that if I do the integral with respect to y first, and notice I have to match up the bounds. Um, the y values are going from c to d, and the x values are going from a to b. This iterated integral will be equal to this one. So the x, x bounds match up with the x values, and the y's bounds, bounds match up with y. So these two, you can switch the order of integration. And furthermore, this is in equal to sort of a separate idea, which is the double integral of the function over the region, which this is something we can give more meaning to, maybe, because it's introduced as the volume under the surface. So going back to the original question, we now know that the double integral over this rectangle of this function is equal to 24. So this is telling us the volume under the graph of this function uh, on this rectangle is equal to 24. And that's mainly what we'll be using Fubini's theorem for. We want to turn double integrals into iterated integrals. And part of the game is then to decide which order we want to integrate in. And there's lots more uh, to say there, but I'll stop there.